What's up guys? You like my new hat? It's kind of cold out here in the desert, which I think is a portrayal of the whole thing about being in the desert. But anyway, coming at you finally with part two or day two of my travels to get down to RTR where I am right now in my van. Um, right now I'm using my van as a little bit of a generator to charge my power station. And one thing I've learned while camping, you know, sort of while being separated from the city is like, I don't have enough power. I at least don't have enough power to go camping. What I have right now does me just fine in the city, but that little 30 watt panel and this uh, cheapo uh, solar generator, not good if you're going to go into camping, camping. Um, perfectly fine in the city because I'm going to be spending plenty of time in buildings and I had a lot of charging situations that just worked out. When I was driving, I can plug into my um, AC outlets in the car and so it just worked out that I always had enough power when I was in the city. It has not been so good for WRTR. On top of that, WRTR, the site has a horrible cell signal. Um, T-Mobile does pretty well. Sprint does pretty well. Verizon is so-so and AT&T just sucks. Like they said, if you have AT&T, don't even try. And there apparently is like one spot where you can get like a good AT&T signal. But basically... Um, Sorry about the irregularity of videos and sort of not being up to date on comments. Doing my best, but it's kind of a challenge out here. But still, like, I'm enjoying myself. I was around a really fun campfire last night. And, yeah, there is a, there's a big rule about video and photography and respecting the culture of the WRTR in the safe space. I'm not going to betray that. But here's day two of my travels to get here. And I'm learning so much. I'm learning so much about what it means to sort of be camping sort of out and away from the city. And I think it's a good education. It's given me a good idea about what things I want to invest into in the future for the van. And the conversations have been great. And the people have been awesome. I also met Curious Carly from YouTube. We've, been, we've had two conversations, which is another person I watch. I am a van life vehicle dwelling youtube nerd and i don't mind being it so when i see like a youtuber i know i'm like oh my god are you such and such so i was really excited um curious carly actually walked up to our fire because i was like i hope i run into her she was because i just i like her i think she's awesome um and she's definitely a genuine van dweller who sort of fits my lifestyle on a certain spectrum so I was excited to meet her so excited to have spent so much time with Crystal Vanner who was like the nicest person ever like I want no one to ever say a bad word about Crystal Vanner ever she's been so nice and so courteous and so helpful in so many ways I can't even express it so love me some Crystal Vanner definitely curious carly was a sweetheart no disappointments yet gus and a bus was great like literally there have been no disappointments in any of the youtubers i've met coming out to this event um so yeah i'm gonna cut now to day two of my travels enjoy <laughs> car whenever i see cargo vans in walmart they're suspect but these are actually passenger vans but anyway this is walmart i'm moving towards the end of the lot <laughs> and as you can see you can you can't even see my car in the distance from like the front of the store um i can see it now it's like all the way back there by that tower and yeah that's kind of a oops sorry my camera's getting kind of chunky. Um, that's kind of where you want to be. <laughs> and the thing about traveling is traveling gives you different freedoms than if you were staying in an area for a long time. Let's try this one more time. The thing about walking and balancing the phone is sometimes you get a little bit out of breath. <laughs> um, trying to talk and walk and <laughs> balance the phone. Um, so that's all fun. Uh, so whenever you see these YouTubers, yeah, they're working pretty hard trying to make all three of these things happen at once. Uh, <laughs> and I'm trying to be <laughs> more dynamic than always sitting in the same place when I talk to you guys. But anyway, point is, like, I'm finally reaching the back of my car, but I am, like, so far from the front of the store. You can see behind me, like, nobody can see my van. 
from where it is and I'm only staying here for a day so I'm not trying to dock here long term and I feel like duh this is the right way to you know be in the Walmart parking lot So the thing is, I haven't left a bad impression because nobody was paying attention to me and I also haven't disturbed my environment and I was still able to use the Walmart parking lot to do what I needed to do in the morning and I don't get why some people just don't get that. Alright, I am about to head out of Tracy and get on the road to Arizona. <laughs> just keep moving down California. It's been interesting having my first travel day. I mean, it was a lot of driving and then I found somewhere to sleep. Um, the difference between, you know, being someplace that I was only going to be for one night, um, there was some insecurity initially about parking. But it really, it didn't last. It was like, I know the rules, let me start poking around for things I know uh, to be true. <laughs> and one of the things I know to be true um, is that my, my van, it blends in. So really, I just not need to not be noticed getting in the back to go to sleep. And so I, I found me like, I looked up apartment complexes, but the apartment, it was kind of weird. And I was like, this doesn't look like a good place to park. And then I was like, okay, this Proceed neighborhood. about nine tenths of a mile. This neighborhood, um, it doesn't look like what I would normally give a thumbs up to. But honestly, everybody's in bed. It's the middle of the night. If I park where I parked, then, um checking the directions um i would be fine as long as i left early enough and i knew that there was a walmart nearby and i couldn't park in the walmart overnight but i could park on the street overnight in a neighborhood and then go to the walmart in the morning and do my morning routine and it was lucky because i really really wanted my hot cocoa um and so I bought some hot cocoa from Walmart and then I'm back in the car and I'm driving in half of a mile right turn and it's great like it was like super easy All right, so I just saw the sign for y Yosemite. Um, hopefully it's not too loud in here. Um, and that was kind of exciting. I mean, to know that, you know, I just saw a sign that that's directing me to Yosemite uh, really makes me feel like, wow, I'm really like out here, like driving. Sorry, I can't control the sun too much as far as like lighting goes while I'm doing this, but oh my gosh it was, it's a really dumb like exciting moment uh of like oh wow i'm like out on the on the road for real um i guess i'm still coming to like terms with this like i i bought a van i live in a van i got in my van i'm on my way to uh arizona i'm gonna be at WRTR and RTR and I've been watching like people obviously like tour the sites and all of that and that's been fun um, but it still felt far away like this thing that you were watching on TV and weren't really there um, and the thing is like I'm you know I'm, I'm a poor person sometimes I see people like talk about the poor and um, downgrade the poor um oh like you know oh it's the dirty people that's messing it up for us and stuff like that and it annoys me so much because a lot of us are poor it's really just like there are people who are brave enough to leave 
the familiar and people who aren't brave enough to live, leave the familiar. And that's really the difference. It's not about if you like have a lot of money and, and can afford like a huge rig. It's about how much are you willing to take all that living in a vehicle or a van has to offer and how much are you afraid to like a lot of people talk about the rvs with like a bunch of stuff piled up on top and trash and all that but the thing is like that's not trash to that person those are their belongings that they are too afraid to let go of and one of the big things like i talked about was like letting go of things you know like getting the cargo carrier on top of my car was not an excuse to keep more it was an excuse to be more efficient about what I was keeping. And I live in a van and I wanna fit in a van. I wanna fit in a van. I don't wanna be paying for a storage unit. Um, I don't want to have a bunch of stuff at someone's house. Like a box or something would be fine. Like I want to fit inside the home that I have chosen and I want my lifestyle to fit the home that I have chosen. A lot of people with those piled high RVs that are like poor and living on the fringe of society, like they're not all druggies. And it's for the mentally ill, like stop acting like the mentally ill need to like, like fall in a hole somewhere. They're mentally ill. And sometimes vehicle dwellers who are in a better position just tend to talk bad about them sometimes. And it gets on my nerves so much, but that's beyond the point. A lot of that is like is is fear. So you're poor and you get this RV and suddenly you want to hold on to everything you possibly can. Um and, and you know, even people in houses have a hard time letting go of things. They just spread them around more. Like people aren't keeping trash. Like it's trash to you. When you see like the the homeless lady walking around with like her cart She's not keeping trash. Like, it looks like junk to you, but it's not junk. It's things that are precious or important to her, him or her in some way. And these people with these piled up RVs, it's the same thing. They are stuck in their situation and, and they don't understand minimalism. Um, and they just don't know. Like, they haven't been educated. And some of them just aren't interested in moving. Like, they want to live with their stuff where they are. They just can't afford a house. And yes, there are actual mentally ill people who do things like uh, poop on the ground, which is, you know, but they're also mentally ill and we don't, we are ignoring building institutions and giving these people the kind of help they need. And they don't just need a house, like they need a more severe level of help and education to not be a difficult part of society. Um, so we just need to stop being angry at them. But just in general, for the people who aren't mentally ill and are living in vehicles and are holding on to things they had when they lived in a house with, with tooth and nail, be willing to let some stuff go. And I think your life will be better. Like, I've let stuff go. And look at me. I'm out here driving through the middle of California um, on my way to Arizona. And I have this life now where it's not so hard to pick up and and leave and I don't know what 2019 is gonna be and I'm very much I, I am an impoverished person like by um income level and all of that I am poor you know I am if I lost this van tomorrow I might be living in a tent um somewhere in California because I wouldn't be able to make it back anywhere but I really don't think that's gonna happen. I have access to the things that can earn me money, but I'm taking a big risk. Like there's nothing about this trip that is a good idea on paper. Um, and if I kept waiting for something to be a good idea on paper, I never would have done anything. So like seeing that Yosemite sign, you know, seeing pictures of Yosemite online, seeing especially a lot of like uh, climbers and, and people like that who do van life, you know, talk about Yosemite. It was this reality, this moment of like, wow, I'm, I'm out here and, and it's super cool. I've dr driven about 200 miles, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to look at... I'm tripping it on my odometer, but that's in the front of the car, and I don't feel like going there right now. Um, but it's going pretty well. 
I'm at a like rest stop with like an RV park in it or something like that. I don't know. There's like a subway. It's in the middle of nowhere, California. Um, just below Fresno. I think technically I'm still in the county of Fresno just based on what the reading was on the front of the gas pump. But, um, yeah, I've, I've made it past it and, and I'm just below Fresno. Um, the RV park, I looked at it and oh my God, there's like RVs packed in there on top of each other. It just made the whole RV thing like less appealing. I mean, it's probably great if you have an RV and you can just pull up in there like, um, part of the way through your journey or something. I don't see why anybody would just stay there like for fun or for life because literally, yeah, you have these gorgeous, gorgeous RVs that are like packed tight right on top of each other, right beside each other. Um, so yeah, that didn't look fun. Didn't look fun at all. And, and it looked like a way to get quickly claustrophobic. So like, yeah, with the RV lifestyle, that 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 was just an image of unappealing, even though I know there's a lot of RVers who go out and they um, boondock and they stay in really beautiful places. But just seeing that, I was like, I wouldn't want to be packed in that RV park right now. Um, and so I went a little further out towards like the edge of the parking lot. I wasn't going to fall for the trick and I almost went to Subway and then I was like, no, Don, don't. And so, yeah, I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to eat my lunch, um, put out a YouTube video um, because you're going to get this at, a, at a, quite a great delay in which it happened and um, then get back on the road. So for my um, second day of travel, actually this is my first real day of travel. I kind of left yesterday evening and I did a couple hours of driving, but you know, I only got from uh, Richmond to Tracy <laughs> um, and then slept in Tracy. So I, and yeah, that was a long drive, but you know, today felt like I really, really put in some time. I've driven about four and a half to five ish hours I don't know I was doing it in like two to three hour blocks and then I would just find the nearest rest stop I would say all right now I'm gonna pull off at the nearest rest stop um so I am going to stay in this is Castic CA I think it's in the LA County area I'm definitely in Southern California at this point um, which is a long drive in and of itself. Like, California's a huge state. Like, <laughs> it's so huge. And it's just straight. So, like, oh, it's crazy. Um, like, it's like, for me as an East Coaster, it's like I just went from, like, Maryland to Florida. Um, and I'm still not quite in Florida properly. But anyway, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm definitely down in the southern part of California, um, which means I'm not really that far from Arizona at this point. I still have many hours of driving ahead, but this is a, a day of a huge accomplishment, um, and I'm just going to bring it to a close because I think that's smart. My body is definitely saying find a place to rest and rest, so I'm going to like see how easy it is to do that here. You think I'd be more afraid of at this point? This is definitely, like, not my, my normal... Like, Tracy was kind of something I could deal with. It was kind of a small old town area where there were apartment buildings and things I was familiar with that I was like, okay, I understand the rules here and how to park. What I really want to do is check out this lake and see if it's parkable. There's a lake near here, um, the Castic Lake. I don't know if I'm saying this right or not. If anybody knows how this is pronounced, feel free to tell me.